Yeah, this notion of minimum viable product, uh, a lot of people talk about, but I find a tremendous amount of confusion about the topic. There's a lot of different ways to interpret that. But to me, it's one of the most important concepts of all of, in all of software. Our job, the way I will define minimum viable product and the way I define it with the teams I work with, it's the smallest possible product that really meets three criteria. First, users will choose to buy it which is actually the hardest and most important, but they will choose to buy it or choose to use it. Second, assuming they want to use it, they can figure out how to use it. And third, assuming that they, uh, they want to use it and they can figure out how to use it, you can actually build it and deliver it when you need it. Uh, short for that, that's the smallest possible product that's valuable, usable, and feasible. Now, it's not enough just to have our opinion that this is minimum viable product. Our job is to actually get evidence that we have the minimum viable product. We generally do that with prototypes and user testing. User prototypes and live data prototypes and face-to-face -face user testing and split testing for the different kinds of prototypes. That's how we collect the evidence to actually know we have circled in on minimum viable product. Now don't confuse minimum viable product with minimum product. Minimum product basically speaks to the smallest functional or utilitarian product. The problem with that, a lot of people call that just the must-have features. The problem with that is people typically don't buy it. They might be able to use it, but they're not motivated to buy it or choose to use it.